This is part two of my conversation with Ryan Burke. If you have not yet listened to part one, go back and listen to that first before listening to this one. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to Fumble Podcast on YouTube and on your podcast platform of choice. Without further ado, here is part two of my conversation with my good friend, Ryan. Enjoy. That's peace, these broken pieces together. So now you you you've spent. Uh, a good chunk of time now at Bosch and yep. you you've you kind of are going back and forth at this point or what are you doing are you staying there permanently so I'm staying there here's kind of another quick weird funny thing is that like I'm staying there I'm a volunteer and as far as I'm concerned that's it I'm good <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how I'm going to live the rest of my life. Right, yeah. I'm living in California in the, among yeah. the redwoods, not too far from the ocean, not yeah. paying rent. And I'm helping out doing some volunteer work. Yeah. Right. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. yo, this is good. I got food. Uh, I've got a place to stay. Uh, I'm just chilling. Life is good. Mm-hmm. And funny, again, kind of funny thing is that like the idea of they offered me a job. They offered me a paid position. Yeah. Like, wow. so, yeah, that's. Well, I mean, if you don't leave long enough, they might as well pay you. <laughs> <laughs> I was already getting good at get kicked out of institutions and places, you know? So, um, no, that's they good. Were, so you, yeah. They offered you a job. They offered me a job um, that, that kind of had like a, a, a funny two part learning experience where it was like um, literally, literally doing the exact same thing literally doing the same thing helping out in the kitchen doing some landscaping hanging out with some people yeah and the funny perception change was when you have a bad day as a volunteer you're like yo i'm here on my own accord i can be if anytime i want yeah i'm doing this for xyz reason whatever tomorrow's gonna be a better day right literally doing the exact same thing for pay when I had a bad day, it was like, they ain't paying me enough for this. I'm oh going to quit. You know, like, I could leave it in, like, whatever. It's a good yeah. thing. It's just, I'm getting paid for doing this because it sucks. Uh, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. interesting, because it was literally the exact same thing. There's no yeah. no added responsibility or anything. It was just wow. the exact same thing. So, But your attitude that, changed about it a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. interesting, right? Like, we could have a – so there was a really cool Hindu proverb that I learned just yesterday. And it was like – the three great mysteries, water to a fish, air to a bird, mankind to itself. Oh. Wow. Right? Yeah. So the idea of like, I mean, and there's a lot of ways you can spin that and how you yeah. perceive it, right? Like, so the idea of talking about perception of those around you and the qualities and the virtues that you have, trying to explain to what water is conceptually to a fish that's born raised grew up and lived its entire life surrounded by it like what do you mean like you know like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. this is just normal life going right. from a to b whatever um so anyway three great mysteries so the idea of like yeah my perception changed when they offered me a job and then ultimately kind of fast forward um i uh was basically had decided to go to school to finally get you know get a college degree to actually get um, the catalyst that would bring me um, to 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 whatever's next. Like, and the interesting thing is that like I've heard the philosophy that like encouraged plus supported equals inspired. Courage plus su- supported equals inspired. Right, but you have to be supported. So if you make a mistake, it's okay. You're mm. supported. Mm-hmm. You're like, hey, you know, like it's that was a miss, but you'll get better, whatever. Mm-hmm. Encouraged is like, hey, you know, you could do a little bit better. You can try this. Mm-hmm. You can do more. And that, that has to be encouraged. Your parents can be very supportive. 
my mom genuinely was very supportive, mm -hmm. but definitely didn't encourage, inspire me to try and do you know, full capacity. There yeah, was other yeah. dynamics there, right? Yeah. But once you have courage plus, or courage, encouraged plus supported, you become inspired, become self-driving operations at that point. Mm -hmm. Because you're like, hey, I can go out and do stuff. It's okay to make a mistake. And I know that the bar is getting higher and I can continue mm -hmm. to, to grow and develop. So I started to go to college basically because of a friend that was there who had said, you should go to school. And I was like, ah, you're funny. And they're like, no, I will help you sign up for classes. I'll show you how to register for classes. I'll, I'll, exactly. And, yeah. and the fact that it was like, I don't want to spend money because I don't have any money on a bunch of classes that are not going to be applicable. No, we'll help you with that as well. So the fact that like I was encouraged and supported, I you know started going to school uh, almost a 4.0. I think at the time it was like a 3.9, and it was like almost. Three, I think I graduated with a cumulative seven, 3.71, something like that. Yeah. So Good started you, going man. to the yeah, thanks. yeah. Went to the community college that was local in there. Um, you know, learned a lot. Talk about mind opening experience coming from an angry teenager who's super short started yeah. a to b right to suddenly learning about the stuff total vast change and they earned a full academic scholarship to um to the university of california so um and, and pick i got accepted to a handful i mean you're in california so you yeah. know the ones like i i, I could have gone to uc davis i could have gone to, to cal uh, ucla i got accepted to uc san diego yeah. um but i got the full academic scholarship for uc santa cruz there you go um so i was like yo but that's another like breeze pretty good yeah exactly <laughs> but the fact that you're so by, at this point you're working at santa yeah. cruz and bosch and then yeah. you're you're getting a full academic scholarship to santa cruz the yeah. school yeah i mean these are these are confirmations these are like, right these are like there's it's a no brainer. I'm going to UC Santa Cruz, right? Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I think I feel like that's what where your mind went to. Yeah, I mean, wow. there's the whole there's the idea of like I mean, Oprah's not the one that originally said it, but she's often attributed to it, where it says that when preparation crosses opportunity, mm -hmm. that's what luck is, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea that like I was taking actions, which mm -hmm. is again, based on faith, right? For preparation, mm -hmm. there was dozens of opportunities that had come up that I wasn't prepared for, mm -hmm. eh, whatever. And there were things that like, I was preparing for, I'm like, just like any college grad now, be like, yo, I'm prepared to take on the world with the jobs. Yeah, and there's no opportunity. So like preparation crossing opportunity, it was I was in Santa Cruz, I had like, you know, kind of uh, working for Rio college and like doing my thing. And then Boom, I applied to a handful of schools. There's, you know, side stories to all of that. But then the uh, the the opportunity came up for, you know, full academic scholarship to UCSD. I was SC and I was like, all right, guess we're going there. Yeah. And another funny side story, like a wonderful family was kind enough to let me stay with them. Because I had I quit working at Bosch because I wanted to focus on school. Yeah. Like going to the university level versus community college level, different ball game. Right. You know, so it's like, yo, you need to like crack down and get on this because um, I wanted to retain what it was almost a 4.0, right? Yeah. And so um, I, you know, I had told just because of, again, moderation is not my strong suit. Uh -huh. So I was going to be like, yo, I'm focusing all on school like crazy. Yeah. And uh, this wonderful family, uh, Mike and Jean, um, that they were kind enough to let me stay at their house in this okay. beautiful part of Northern California, wow. which like, if you wanted to stay in a closet, it would probably be something like three thousand dollars a month. <laughs> you know, that's the Bay Area, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, man. So they were so kind, like wonderful family. Let me stay with them for pretty much like two and a half years for free, just like while I went to school. So again, another kind of divine little assistant. Things things that were put in the right path now, as you walk yeah. along, right? you you you're mentioning all these blessings right yeah that, that you've received uh and of course they are they are blessings but it also matters who the subject of all of this is right like i think i feel like you were 
you put out good energy, you put out positivity, you put out, like you learn to, to just really be, a, I mean, not that you learn, you always had it, but you, you were just such a pure and loving soul to, to people around you. And I, I'm saying that from my own experience, right? I know I've known you for all these years and I know that I'm, I'm first of all, 90% of the stories you've shared with me, like I imagine myself in those situations and I would say, wow, I could have come out very like up op opposite end of the, mm -hmm. like end of that. So yeah. there were choices that you made and you endured, you endured a lot of these hardships even though you didn't know it at the time, like yeah, when yeah, you were yeah. younger, right? You didn't even know it, but you, something was lining up for you all the way up until these two and a half years that you stayed with this yeah. uh, awesome family. But what I'm trying to get at is they probably wouldn't have offered that to anybody. I'm saying that, that you, you weren't an asshole to them, right? right? right. Like you were, you were, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, I'm saying like it, right. It, you could in those two and a half years yeah. if you were like your 18 year old self it would have been a different Dude. story you know what i mean yeah man. so my I point tell is my wife yeah. <laughs> she's like she didn't know people at work my wife no one believes that the teenage version of ryan compared to being like the ryan now thank goodness so so yeah uh, man i'm parallel. saying that you 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 know uh you had you had to also offer something there to for that to become a uh, attractive offer for them you know what i mean for the family that took you in dude um, i appreciate that i didn't think that you had that kind of compassion in you <laughs> i d i don't i was I just you're reading read off the it. teleprompter I read the yeah you sent me the script i read it uh sign check. this contract send that send the check that you didn't have to pay the medical bills send that to me send that my way <laughs> dude no Pej, i i mean i just sincerely appreciate that and and certainly absolutely think the same thing of you like i mean like you like for virtues qualities intellect all of that so no um, man i i appreciate that you. too but i i obviously didn't um offer that in hopes of something in return i was saying that because i genuinely mean it and I got a text message from you that said, you better say this back to me. Just kidding. <laughs> Did you get the <laughs> Apple Pay for the time? No. Uh, no um, okay, so to, to wrap up, to get you, to get us to present day, right? We, yeah, we, yeah. Let's, so you finished school, UC Santa yep. Cruz. Yep. Uh, you studied, what did you study again? Uh, business management and economics. Business management and economics. Yeah. Um, you finished school how how long until a you find your better half and then b uh find the opportunity in austin yeah yeah um she says hi by the way like oh, she originally wanted to come over and say hi real quick um okay so the timeline to find find um, my better half and the opportunity here in austin so um, luckily, it was kind of, again, through the benefit of, of networking on, on you know, people that you know. Um, I think a lot, of, a lot of stuff for, if you can have a, and this is with internally and corporate culture as well. If you can have an advocate, if you can have someone that will speak for you or vouch for you, you know, your own tr personal champion, that will help accelerate things significantly through, throughout anything, right? Yeah. So the fact that like, um, I had just finished school, uh, this was 2011, and um, that um, basically it was, you know, the whole announcement pictures, ah, graduate, blah, blah, blah. A friend said, had sh long story again, short on, you know, like, hey, are you interested in the position in, in, a, in a management position in, in Texas? And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was kind of like, um, all right, well, tell me more about it. And it was, um, it was food and beverage industry. It was uh, the job was a, a manager at a convention center. So basically, uh, the, the big events, giant convention center, mm -hmm. um, every major town has a convention center. So yeah. um, they, you know, I came out and basically, like in my car, like packed it up, drove from NorCal down to LA, hung out with some friends, and then crossed over to Texas which is a really long drive. I just want you to know, like, don't think it's, it's a long drive. I've driven from Maryland 
to here and then I've driven from Virginia to here. Both times, five to six day drives. So that's a long drive. <laughs> I know. I, I luckily I got the jeans from my dad, which equals uh we have nothing to do, so we drive for six days. <laughs> so you drive like crazy. Yeah. 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 So drove out here. Actually, so again, shameless plug, because there's so many Californians, myself included, that are moving to Austin. I'll tell you, I'll go on record right now and say Austin is terrible. Don't come out. Here. <laughs> Don't plan on visiting. Don't hey. like. Well, other than the shooting from a couple of days ago. But but no, I mean, honestly, though, I've heard such good things about Austin. You're Dude, kidding me. Austin's great, man. Austin's Austin's absolutely. Anyone that comes to Austin loves it. Yeah. And that screw, screws up the entire housing market. Okay, that's where you're going. All right. <laughs> Listen, man, you've got, you've got some breaks in your life. You need to give back. Okay? That's actually very good point. They absolutely, <laughs> bro. You could you could sell your life. Someone could sell a shack anywhere in California, like living in Modesto, and move out. I got a beautiful home, bro. I love I like love, it's that's great. Twenty three hundred square feet, wow. like like vaulted ceilings, big. No way. Look at that. Man, I'm telling you, like, Bro. there's you can't, I couldn't, not in California, right? So, yeah, I know. Um, Especially <laughs> Bay Area, the, the, its own economy within the world. So, yeah. Dude, so, yeah, you get, that's... yeah. So, this opportunity of, yeah, uh, with the convention. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, on the, so I'm, so I come out and the, 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 um, the, the, I guess the, the president of the company, uh, again, kind of a friend of a friend, networking, stuff like that. She lives in Houston, right? And so she was like, hey, we'll come to Houston, whatever. We'll get some barbecue and we'll we'll talk about it, you know, more in detail, set you up on board, basically. She was describing an onboarding process to get me ramped up to be like the new manager for a convention center. Well, I did not like Houston. <laughs> I didn't. No, way. it was, okay. dude, uh, no, nah, man, like, I mean, I, it's, it's kind of, it's grown on me now since then having, you know, being closer and going to visit or whatever, but it was like, I mean, nothing in comparison to California traffic. I got sure yeah. you of that, but like a lot of traffic nonstop. Think of like, new, I mean, you're from the East coast. So like think of New York yeah. kind of with cowboy hats and a big truck, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's yeah. a lot of Houston, man. So it's, a lot going on and it just wasn't for me. I was like, okay. eh, not impressed or whatever. So I had a, another buddy of mine that lived in Austin at UT, um, was finishing up his undergrad. And I was like, yo, I haven't seen Pasha in forever. Let me go kick it with him for a bit, right? Yeah. Came out to Austin and I was like, immediately blown away. Austin's dope, dude. Austin is the greatest town ever. Like, it's just cool. It's like, the it, first off, it's the capital of Texas, which you'd never know yeah. based on like culture. It's basically a little California right. where like, there's like people, the, the average age is like 32 for the area, right? There's wow. the giant It's university. a young city. Yeah. It's a yeah. young city with tons of stuff going on. South by Southwest, great barbecue. The music industry is popping. Like so many people get started at South by. That's, I'm no, sure that's you know. the type of description I've heard about Austin. So no, I, it I, I yeah. sucks. Do not move here. <laughs> are you, are you, are you bipolar by chance? <laughs> like, Moderation is not my strong suit. You've gone over this. All right. I love like, Austin. It sucks. Don't come. <laughs> who's, who's 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 on this podcast? Um, <laughs> dude, no. It was. It's 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 genuinely a charming city where it's like it's it's like a big city that has a very small town feel. Like you bump into people all the time. Downtown, they block off a street. Um, every weekend, it just basically becomes not Mardi Gras. I forget what the comparable street is where they block it off. Yeah, and yeah. it just becomes a walking street. Like you can oh, street wow. musicians playing and like they've got the lights and there's like, it's just awesome. And like every weekend, man, like it's, it's definitely on my list of places to visit. Dude, man. you come out to visit, like uh, bring your boots and we'll play basketball. It'll be fantastic. You know? I will. I will. And my cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> actually it's funny so uh, someone told me this on the plane as i was flying out i was told him i was gonna go visit austin the guy was from scotland and i was like i have i've never met a texan i didn't like right and i was telling this thing and he, he looks at me and he's dead serious he's not even kidding he's like oh there's no texans in austin oh wow <laughs> and, he's, and he's right like that's not wrong 
That's wow. dead serious. So everyone's Everyone. there for school or, or they're from out of town. Dude, and- always from every single one of them, man. Like I, I no joke, Pez. And this would this comes as a surprise for me specifically because it's the fact that like I lived in California yeah. and you see out of state license plates, whatever. Yeah. I, before things all locked down, I would see a California license plate at least once a week. No way. Yeah, dude. Dang. Like everyone's moving. Everybody's like it's like the how the, the the growth rate, something, something was like a hundred people. It was between a hundred and a thousand. I'd have to take a look, but move to Austin every day, every day for the last five Boy. years. Yeah. Move to Austin and the infrastructure is not keeping up, but we're working on it as far as fastest growing cities, like on a per capita, if you look at the population and percentage growth yeah. or whatever, right. here, hands down. And this is from like, this is the census, the U S census. Right. Fastest growing city in America. Forbes magazine put it as like within the next 20 years, 15 to 20 years, it's going to be like New York, Chicago, LA, Austin, you know, Miami or whatever, right? Like yeah. large, like it's wow. growing fast. So you, you got there at the right time, man. You got man, there. At I, good- dude, I really did. And if I was smart, if I was, if I was better with my degree, I would have taken any money that I had, every penny of it, and I would have invested in a house or Allegra. My wife, my beautiful second half, right? She was living literally in downtown at, at a condo that was like a hundred thousand dollars, like to purchase, right? Yeah, that is that is like yeah. illegal the, here. <laughs> right. <laughs> at the time that I like moved here, immediately, especially the juxtaposition out of California, yeah. I was like, oh my god, I need to buy everything and i was like i didn't know just because you don't i learned how to play the recorder in you know my k-12 through education i didn't learn how to freaking hey here's what you need for investment here so you do a loan yeah, here's all yeah. that none of that's life applicable stuff but i can tell you what the pythagorean theorem is and i've used that zero <laughs> um you know so um so anyway but the but man it's, it's growing fast it's growing fast yeah, and that's amazing we'll, so, i'll show you a great time so i'm here in austin so i check it out to austin i leave houston going back to the timeline so i go to houston houston's okay mm-hmm. and i leave houston and i'm like yo but austin's pretty dope yeah i got you know football feeling so i um hang around a good time and then the the company owner is like oh you would be managing at the austin convention center i'm like all right well now we're now we're talking yeah you know yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, um, so let's see the paperwork. So um, got the job, started working at the convention center. Um, can't say anything bad about it. NDA, non-disclosure. Can't uh-huh. say anything bad about it. That's not actually true, but it's the best practice. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so it was good. I mean, like, again, it, was, it certainly, I mean, galvanized, like, my work ethic. Like, as yeah. far as, like, you know, like, hey, you need grit. And, and catapulted me to like, I think the success that I'm at now at my current um, position, because like, you know, 14 hour days, you, when you do an event, you go to an yeah. event, if management's there, start of the event and the event, right? So if right. you've got like a all day conference, you got there at least an hour in prep in advance and then yep. hour prep, so it's like, you're doing work. So when I, my colleagues at, at work now, you're like, hey, Ryan, you need to, are you, it's like eight and a half, nine hours. And I'm like, I'm accustomed to 14 hour days. Like, and it wasn't sitting at a desk, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. cakewalk, man, you know, right, so right. Well, um, don't, don't tell them too much. They're going to put you out in the field. <laughs> right. right dude, yeah. <laughs> oh man. So, um, so yeah, so did that for like, I guess a handful of years, three, four years. And while I was working at the convention center, um, met my beautiful wife who had just finished up grad school here. And, she wow. was like a, oh man, she's an incredible person. She is an incredible person. Like it was really cool. You meet, I mean, I, let's, let's be real, right? There was a, I was ready. I was like, I was like college grad, you know, like time's ticking, like late twenties. Yeah. You got a good job like, now. Yeah. I got a job. Exactly. Let's start where are the prospects, right? Like, Hey, BB, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, like, um, and you know, you, you kind of, there's a whole study on like, sociology, depth percep- perception of others and how you disclose information and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and Allegra was very much a unique person. And it was like, it was our, our, our first date was actually not a date 
at all like it was it was a well, let's just hang out with friends it was kind of like a hey i'm gonna go do this thing so i met allegra and i'm i'm happy like since we're recording this i actually would be i don't think we've ever recorded the conversation i'll give I'll, stop me fast forward i can be like tivo bro like you want to <laughs> like chapter two whatever we'll do yeah. it but i met there was a friend that had done a really cool concept soup potluck okay mm, okay soup potluck and she basically um, delegated people like, hey, can you make a soup for maybe like 10, 15 people? Can you make a soup for maybe 10, 15? Can you make a soup? And because soup's pretty easy, right? It's yeah, hard to yeah. screw up soup, right? Yeah. And freaking she'd ask like five or six people to make soup. Sometimes there was duplicates. Most of the time there wasn't. And make soup. And then she would ask other people with larger homes or nicer areas or whatever, would you mind hosting some friends of ours? Or that, da, 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 da. Yeah. And like 50 people would show up at these things for like, you know, once a month, man. Yeah. Katie's soup potluck, dude. Like you would show up legit. Like, wow. So, so I, uh, I, I, you know, had gone to this thing cause it was, you know, networking, getting out, whatever, something fun to do. And it was always a good, good crowd. And, um, and I had seen I had seen Allegra a couple of times, you know, because it's you get the regulars, you get the handful of new people, but again, it's like 50 people, so you're hanging out, chit chatting, yeah. whatever. And um, and a friend of mine was like, "Hey, Ryan, these girls are from California too. Come and talk to them." In my head, I was like, "Great, just what I need. Another girl from California." <laughs> Bring it to, to like whatever right you know yeah, so yeah. and um so we were just kind of just chit-chatting and hanging out or whatever and um kind of like hey i'm I'm gonna go paddleboard she talked to me about paddleboarding i'd never been paddleboarding right okay and it was kind of cold at the time to outside yeah cold this is coming from a minnesotan right yeah right so the fact is like all right you're gonna go paddleboarding and i was like all right well cool she's like well, when we warm up we'll go paddleboarding because i like to paddleboard and i'm like all right that sounds good and in the meantime, it was like, well, hey, I'm, I'm going to an art museum or I'm going to a movie with a bunch of friends. Pasha was one of them. Do you want to yeah. come? Hey, do you want to you know, do this thing? We're doing you know, we're going to a concert. Um, do you want to come? You know, kind of. And it was like always groups of people just hanging out. And, and so there was when things finally warmed up a few months later. Um, we had set up to go paddleboarding. Right. Yep. And it was my buddy Peter, myself, Allegra, my buddy Dan. Uh, Dan's girlfriend, a group of us, we we're all going to go paddleboarding right on the water. That's another cool thing about Austin. It has a river, Colorado River goes right through downtown Austin. Oh, cool. And people get out and kayak and paddleboard all the time on it. Yeah. So it's like downtown life That's with water. Pretty. Yeah. Right? Like it's, it's awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, like five of us, we're going to go paddleboarding. And this is, we had gone out as friends a handful of times already, mm -hmm. right? And so Dan called me that that morning or like the day before. No, it was that morning. Yeah. And uh, he was like, hey, man, I'm really sorry. Me, me and the girlfriend can't make it. Really sorry. We can't make it to, uh, to paddle boarding, right? Yeah. I think and, that's uh, where this is going. Right, yeah. <laughs> right, right. And I was, like, I, was like, I was like, hey, man, no worries. And it kind of dawned to me. And then I reached out to my buddy Peter. And I was like, hey, Peter. You can't make it today either. <laughs> <laughs> and people were like, okay, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so, like, we wow. meet up at this restaurant. It's like one of my favorite restaurants in town. Yeah. And Allegra's like, hey, where are those other guys? Right? right. And I was like, oh, Dan, Dan couldn't make it. They couldn't make it. Like, here's a text from Dan. Hey man, sorry, me and me and your girlfriend got a bail. So I guess it's just you and me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we're not like, mentioning Peter at all. Nah, Pete didn't want to come. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he's get terrified of paddleboard. <laughs> and I'm like, and so yeah, and so um, and so she she's described it. She goes like, all of a sudden that she's like, she's like, I suddenly get really nervous. She's like, I was on a sneak sneak attack date. Suddenly it was just me and me and Ryan, you know, yeah, like just yeah, the two yeah. of us. And it had never been just the two of us. Right. right. And we, you know, we, uh, we got some, got some lunch. Uh, we went down, we did some paddle boarding, just floating in the water, just hanging out. Yep. Uh, and Allegra, 
Allegra laughs at me because she goes, after paddleboarding, we have we had wrapped up. That was it. That was yeah. the planned event. You know, sometimes it was movies, sometimes it was art, whatever. Yeah. Paddleboarding, check, done. And she's like, and then you, she's talking about me. She's like, all of a sudden you were like, man, I'm thirsty. Are you thirsty? Man, it's so thir- hot outside. Do you want to get a drink? It's thirsty. We can get some lemonade. It's my yeah. tea. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> like, well, we've, di- we've discovered that you're not good with moderation. So. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah exactly so it was like yo i'm i'm so thirsty yeah and so like so we went to like it was a it's like a juice land or something like yeah. that like went and got you know got smoothies or whatever and chit chatted and then it was like hey i'm actually going to be meeting up with peter and dan <laughs> later tonight do you do you want to come you know like maybe yeah, we'll grab yeah. some dinner and then um that night that we went like downtown met with pete and like yeah. dan a rooftop restaurant or whatever and just kind of hanging out so like that was that was like the first date that uh, that Allegra and I had I guess that was 2013 2013 my my first uh encounter with Shada very similar what honey not 2013 uh oh <laughs> 2012 2012. I said 2012. He did not say 2012. The fall of 20. The fall of 2012. <laughs> okay, we're closer to 2013. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's closer to 20. I'm not gonna say that. You're gonna yeah. get me in trouble. Uh, you already are. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, that's funny that that was your first date with her. Uh, with, yeah. As a result of a one cancellation and one forced cancellation. <laughs> Um, rescheduling i like rescheduling there you go <laughs> my first date with shada was uh supposed to be a group event in virginia and i so and i'm being honest three of my friends that were supposed to join one got pneumonia so you know about that and then she couldn't <laughs> come and she, with her husband is not going to come without her so they right. couldn't come and then my other friend never responded to the text so it ended up being just her and I and at a Starbucks, not That's, paddleboarding. This is yeah. Virginia. Yeah. So dude, funny. It's just funny how a lot of similarities <laughs> in our lives, man. Bro, this is crazy stuff we've never even talked about. And like the no, similarities, you right? Can't, not, you can't make this shit up. It's it's dude, you really yeah. can't. And just to kind of get the, the fact of like, you know, the whole idea of like good souls and like having overcome tar- hardships. Like, I think that it's a, ter- I don't know who said this quote, but I really like the idea. She like, it was like saints are rarely heroes and especially heroes, in minnesota you bet you <laughs> and heroes are rarely saints you know but the fact that both are equally beneficial yeah. and phenomenal type of people you know so the fact that like overcoming hardships as well yeah the sneak and attack I- date method if you're single right now listening to this <laughs> look Here's how it's done, depending on what your goal is. Yeah. Get fla- <laughs> Either get flaky friends that will cancel. Check. <laughs> Obviously, I'm a fill in for this podcast right now. So, like, <laughs> that's, the opposite. To <laughs> that's an opposite. He's an example of a different, the opposite. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So it's it's just crazy how many similarities. And I'll and I'll uh, I see your um, fried chicken hand, and I raise you uh a laceration to the head from a car accident so there you go <laughs> That's awesome. i think that was the only uh occurrence that i didn't have a matching story for so there is that <laughs> now it's comparable i'd say yeah. that like yeah, yeah, staples yeah. in the back of the head there yeah. you go 25 grand later my parents have to pop up no health insurance i'm not even joking no health insurance that's crazy yeah but it's not about me it's about your life and your uh, amazing journey so when did you get in the car accident 16. so walk me to that timeline so you're 16 you get into a car accident how many more hours do we have no i'll i'll do it i'll give it we'll we'll do a reverse we'll do a reverse podcast all right (laughs) i want to do it i'm not you've already registered your own podcast now called (laughs) called less than great how it's not done by ryan burke oh my god no i'll i'll button that up just because it, it came up real quick i was 16 i was dumb i was racing it was my fault i was racing a friend let's just say he made it to the destination and i did not 
so that's that's the uh that's the short end of it ended up with um some (laughs) shock trauma some rehab and uh here we are (laughs) Here but, we yeah. are, dude. <laughs> yeah. oh, this is the it. result. I got this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Still trying to get to grow back to normal color. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Love the beer, by the way. It's looking sharp. Clean Thank you, man. I did it for yeah. you. Yeah. Right. Well, I went. I went. I went from glamour shots <laughs> to this. There you go. No, it looks good. It's very link linked in of you. <laughs> LinkedIn of you. Um, so yeah, so, so, so surprise day. Fall yep. of 2012, you guys have your first date, intentional slash unintentional. Right. Um, and then uh, how fast un- or how long until your yeah. pop the question? So I locked locked it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Before she ran off. <laughs> right. <laughs> like <laughs> how much? Before, <laughs> before she got to know you too well. <laughs> right actually no joke kind of like side story she goes this was like this was like last year she's like she goes i don't think i realized how much of a nerd you were when i started dating you and like, i was like thanks because <laughs> i'm a great presenter <laughs> there you go yeah <laughs> right you turned yeah. that right exactly and, and there, that, that as far as like marriage goes i mean that's the whole idea of like trust and disclosure right like yeah. i mean you know the whole thing the idea of like your ego ideal and your presented self like who you want other people to think you are and yeah. then what other people what you think other people think you are and then what other people actually think you are <laughs> deviating all from like who you actually are that's right right, that's right? or who you think you are so and that's um, ever changing too because you're growing and you're learning of water and uh birds and mankind <laughs> yeah <laughs> By the way, like an hour ago in this podcast, you said my second half, as you refer to, to Allegra. I just want to point that out. You didn't mention better half. But Thanks. We're a balanced bird, like two wings or whatever. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You turned out. Yeah, I like how you fixed that one, too. <laughs> I like how you fixed that one, too. You said two. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the other ones, you screwed up. <laughs> That's all hilarious. of 2012 you met your better half and how long did it go until you uh realized she's the one uh to tie yeah. down with and yeah and yeah. then and your wedding was in 2015 15 that's right I know, see i know that one at least <laughs> i hope yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah you had to dj uh, it so you, you would not buy a high paying venue for the dj <laughs> um so from 2012 i guess till it would be 2015 yeah. um how yeah, long yeah. was it from when you popped the question from so- from the actual question itself yeah, yeah so there was this is this is so dumb Pej. i mean i i think it's it's pra- it's it's a practical approach it's not romantic but it's very much how i how i thought at the time okay and i think this is i think it's relevant and it's important because children of trauma that have come up from rough upbringings, right? Mm-hmm. Partial, partially my degree as I studied interpersonal communication. Mm. I studied interpersonal communication because I did not want to have a divorce and that it impacted like, you know, my, uh, my kids and my marriage or whatever. Yeah. So, cause it was very, very important to me to understand mm-hmm. the disclosure wheel and like Jahari window or Jahari window and, and all the theory behind it because of the fact of like, I wanted, they want to be fighting my entire rest of my life. Right. right. So, so, so I say that because there's a certain chemical in your brain, right? And I don't know which endorphin or serotonin or whatever, yeah. but it's got a max shelf life, a max shelf life of two years, max shelf life. Okay. After two years, that chemical stops firing. And oh. so you see couples that are so perfect for each other people that you, I'm sure, you know, that you're like, wow, well, they're getting married or they're such a great couple. And then oddly, right around the year and a half, two and a half years, they break up and you're like, what? Like they were made for each other. That's perfect. Like what? Mm -hmm. And it's because of that, whatever genuine, you want to talk about levels of perception and whatever, that, that, that chemical disappears. And now what you're left with is very, pragmatic rubber meets the road here's the person the good the bad the ugly yeah the 
the what you oversaw or what you justified or what you forgave before because of that that perception that chemical and i think we call that the honeymoon period the yeah honeymoon the, the, yeah, yeah well it's funny because like the other aspect of it is so i studied divorce within the u.s within north america's divorce rate in countries and this is looking at everyone from the age of 18 on the most common year for divorce is actually in year one that's the most common year for divorce yeah exactly again wow. these are people who make adolescent decisions at a mm -hmm. very young age right mm -hmm. like oh they were involved in like vegas like, yeah and like so statistically across the north america most common year for year one the second most common year for divorce is actually year seven again give or take there's a phrase for this as well called the seven year itch right mm -hmm. like the seven year itch is when it's like hey I'm not old and decrepit. I'm still kind of young. I've still got my good looks and charisma. Uh, I yeah. can still pull the eject button and I'm out and it's still gonna be okay and I'll be able to make it work. You know, that's that seven year itch. Now again, it depends on where, what the average North American gets married at. Like right. if you're throwing out random numbers, let's say 25, you get married. Then you're looking at seven years of 32. They're like, well, 32 is not irreconcilable for my still got my good looks. You hit the gym, get my revenge body on and yeah. rock this. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's for divorce, right? After that, after the seven year itch, like the most common statistical number for divorce is after 20 years. Is after 20 years. So, and it's because, and you can, I'll give you one guess, but they've got small boots and they cry a lot. Um, and that's, yeah, I mean, they did say they wear boots and not cowboy boots. We're talking like Timberlands, <laughs> okay? <laughs> right. So it's the it becomes a very much a business entity. Like, hey, I'm a job as a parent. You are my partner in this entity called Parenthood, and we're just here to. Nope, nope. I don't really, but you provide income. I provide food and parenting, and we bounce each other off for the children, for the betterment of the kids. Mm -hmm. And it's just there. Hey, I'm only signed up in this contract until the kids are off on their own, doing their own thing. So, and then again, 20 years, the most common were like, well, they're not around anymore. I don't have to put up with you. Uh, so we're yeah. out. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. the most common, you're right. So, so, so I say, I say that because of the fact, so when you say, what was the timeline from like, yo, I'm got a booty like pow, 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 looking good in them jeans to like, will you spend the rest of my, my life with me? Right. Yeah. yeah. I in very intentionally made it two years. I wanted to have a two year courtship I because see. of the idea of like, hey, I do not want, again, kind of like bringing my buddies to that thing of like, right. I'm really good at screwing stuff up. Let me put a framework in place that's going to help me be successful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and mitigate any problems that I have. Mm -hmm. Cause I know I'm, I'm self aware of kind of shortcomings that I have, or at least some of them. So it's like, all right, well, let me put everything I can to put in place to set me up for success and a framework to operate within. So that two year minimum was a self-imposed um, kind of restriction. So I very intentionally and, and very methodically, it wasn't like, yo man, like you wanna just watch Netflix all day and then for two years, let's get married. Yeah. No, it was like, hey, let's go out and have engaged experiences. Let's go out and try this. What are your thoughts on that? Or what do you think about this? And, you know, like whatever. Very, very planned and very thorough, I think. I mean, yeah, yeah. But, but that that shows how serious you took the idea of marriage and how serious you were about yeah. the idea of, you know, spending the rest of your life uh, together. So, yeah, man. I mean, because like, we even did premarital counseling. Wow. Like pre premarital counseling when spoke. And in fact, the counselor, I'll never forget. She was like, this is great. I love seeing couples when they still love each other. <laughs> Typically we see couples in here on the later end. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, the fact yeah, yeah. We were like, we were either, we were, you know, um, asking to get married or ask your parents. When I met her dad. He, he's a scary looking dude, man. He's not mm -hmm. a scary guy, but like intimidating looking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you're like, oh, God, I, I, he's still in my phone as Mr. Thompson. <laughs> like, uh, that's wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so 
Yeah, premarital counseling, did all of that. Um, we took a Myers-Briggs test to get personality matches up. So, you know, like, are you familiar with Myers-Briggs? I'm not. It's a, it's a personality test. There's a okay. handful of them. Okay. Um, I like Myers-Briggs the most. I think it's the most from my own interpretation, again, which is not credible, <laughs> but like it's the most um, easily correlated and applicable. Oh, you're, you're an extrovert who's, you know, like, you know, thinks like this and intuitive. Cool. All right. That's yeah. cool. That's great there. And it's very, um, it's easily replicable. It's easily, you know, it's, it's well done. So that right. we did that. So we did that. We both find out that we're both ENFJs. She obviously is an INFJ. She's an introverted version of me. So if you want to have this exact same podcast with someone that's a lot more introspective, Allegra's beautiful. She'll look good for the camera for your podcast audience. Okay, we'll do. And it'll probably be 30 minutes as opposed to. She, she's E slash I. Oh, she's correcting you. Fire spring. Again, smart husband. I'm deferring back to mission control. And she is um, she's a bit of both. She's introverted and extroverted. All righty. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So I'd we love did, to have her yeah. on, by the way, to, to well, hear cool. all. Yeah, man. Absolutely. To validate, cross check everything. Validate, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Love it. Um, uh, no, dude. So it was like, I mean, like I said, so we, yeah, took it, took it. I mean, cause you, because like you, I think you reach a point in life in general. There's, I mean, anyone, anyone doesn't you know, to recognize, yo, dating when you're like 19 is very different than dating oh at 25, God. right? Like whole different ball game. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I was, yeah. I was out there. In fact, while we were dating during our courtship, this is the thing that I continually appreciate and admire about her because she's hot and great personality. Yeah. I can say that because she's my wife, right? Yeah. She was very forthright. And she said, she goes, Hey, just so you know, I'm dating, I'm dating, I'm dating around, I'm playing the field. There's oh, a couple right. other people. On it. And I was oh. like, I was like, okay, cool. And I appreciated that kind of candor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So because I basically, for me, it was it was forthright. It was honest. It was laying the table like, hey, let's, let's have a great. real conversation here, right? And I love that. But also, it was like, all right, well, I got up my game then. What are these other schmucks doing? Like, let's do this. Yeah. Like, let me bring flowers 45 minutes out to like drop off at your nice. work. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. It was it was based in a platform of of honesty and strong. She's a speech That's, therapist, which has wow. nothing to do with communication other than speaking. That's great though, man. That's um. Yeah, your your journey to marriage is this is probably the first thing that's slightly different than mine, <laughs> because you were much more uh, um, almost methodical w in your approach, yeah. and and I I I probably and I was thinking about this as you were describing it. I probably associate that due to the fact that you came from a home yeah. that wasn't united and. Yeah. and and you didn't want that to repeat in your life. 100%. I think that was your motivating factor in the way you pursued Allegra. And 100%. That's, yeah. 100%. So that's um, that's rare. I haven't seen many stories like that. I haven't heard of many stories of, of courtships in that manner. Right. And that's, and the honesty from her to you, that's, that's yeah. all great, man. That, that, um, Shada and I had that too, you know, she, in the beginning, she said, you know, we, we were long distance at first of all. So it was like, I'm, I'm over here. Get this. I moved back to Maryland in 2011, 2012 for, for a couple of years after, after UC Davis, I was working. No way. Never met Shada though. <laughs> I was living in Maryland, which is one state over from Virginia. Like yeah. they're literally 30 minutes apart. And <laughs> I, I never got to see her there at all. I moved back. I moved back here within like the first five to six months of me being back here. We start talking. And then I'm like, by the way, where do you live? Oh, I live in Virginia. Oh, okay. Oh, 30 minutes from where I've always been. That's <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, it was cool in that sense because we actually had a lot of mutual friends and we understood. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, yeah, cool. we actually had, you know, and she's the same religion's background and everything, so. That's awesome. Yeah, so it was, um, it was, it was interesting. So our, our relationship was different in that sense. We weren't really seeing each other as many times as we wanted to, but that was a, 
we had enough experience in dating by this point. Yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was 29 when I mar- I got, you know, when we got married and sh- and we dated start when I was 28. So about a year of dating. Yeah, yeah. But but in this year, I think we quick because we were both interested in marriage but we weren't really interested in dating anymore if that makes sense no 100 percent. yeah so it I mean, was after just, you get sick of the process you're like yeah. look yeah. i'm i'm sick of not i'm sick of talking about contracts and not signing anything or talking yeah. about houses like going through contract review or right or, or having contracts that are terminated by the other person right <laughs> Hundred percent, dude. Uh, I exactly. Anyway, for for all of that, I, we were both kind of jaded from the dating scene, mm-hmm. and so we weren't even really interested in dating each other. Like we were just kind of like not. When we first met at that Starbucks that I mentioned, it was an accidental. It became a date, but we didn't. Neither of us, and I'm being genuine. Neither of us were looking at it as anything uh, other than just meeting a person. Right. right. And yeah. A That's person awesome. that happens to have some mutual friends with me. Right. Yeah. That yeah. was the, that was the motivator. Anyway, that led to, um, a natural progression into dating yeah. And, and, yeah. and it naturally blossomed into marriage. Yeah. So, so yeah. That's awesome. So thank you. Yeah. So that was 2015 for 2015 for us too. So you had to go ahead and get married the same year I did. <laughs> I remember because you were at our wedding, like talking about getting married. And I was like, fine, I'll pay for Shada to be here as well. I suppose, you know, like I'll just cut the cake as well while I'm at it. Bake that. Well, I guess that took the pies, fun- I guess. <laughs> that took the funding out of your DJ. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. We made it happen by cutting the DJ. No worries. That's all right. <laughs> well, we, we, we had a lovely time there. It was a beautiful. What do you mean you don't like K-pop for three hours? That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even Chinese pop anymore. Man. You went to Cir- another Asian- Circle K, the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Man, so 2015, you get married. You guys have now two beautiful children. Um, uh, which are ages are now what your kids now one and three and a half one and three and a half man beautiful yeah, yeah see that's where we that's where we're 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 chasing you guys we're still we're still childless <laughs> so well t- i'll tell you from a from a from a someone who's just a one or two steps ahead of you i certainly say there's no rush <laughs> like this yeah. is and this is where, you know, step away from just like Ryan talking to Pej, uh, just honest, you know, candid yeah. stuff like that. Um, hands down, man, hands down. The single most source of joy I've ever experienced, period. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I say that because there's a lot of like stigma around like, ah, eh, kids, not kids, kids, whatever, right? Irrefutably, hands down. Now, with that stated, because that's the first and foremost, yeah. continual appreciation and joy, the amount of stress and pressure and challenges that come with it, like any young person can be like, oh, this is going to compromise my nights and going out and stuff like that. Yeah, of course it will. What it really jacks up is your mornings and you don't ever think about that. Oh, <laughs> like, wow. I got you. Little, like, it's a trade-off. Hey, it's a trade five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Hey, I got teeth. Wow. Or come here or look <laughs> at this or look, we're trying to get ready for school slash work. But dada, dada, I have a truck. You see a truck. Would you please put some pants on? No, dada, I want to have truck. And it's like, I have to leave and be at work in like 10 minutes. So if you could please put dada, Liu, Liu threw up in the thing. No, you didn't. You spilled the water like mornings. <laughs> Did you, do you enjoy that chaos though in hindsight or as you're looking at it now my beautiful wife <laughs> like, who's like i could not do this without her mm-hmm. like you know and again this is like the, the very the very real thing man like the the I, kids are fantastic so cool unbelievable unbridled continuous sense of joy the 
the practical life aspects of it, getting you know locked up in a house and not having them being able to go to daycare just because of where we're at right now for, COVID, for yeah. pandemic and stuff yeah. like that. But um, she's incredible. She's an incredible person. She's very, very, both of us are, are gritty in terms of our work ethic. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, 14 hour days, 16 hour days, Allegra just nonstop all to go on t- being a mom, you know, entertaining, cooking, taking out parks, playing, all of that, trying to do mostly screen free as much as possible, yeah. um, which I commend her for. Um, but it's it's certainly certainly a challenge. So when you say like, do I enjoy do I enjoy the chaos? It, there, depending, it depends on when you ask me. In the moment, yeah, like this is very real. Yeah. Like in the moment. I'm like, no, Dada is grumpy because yeah. your brother woke up at one o'clock, three thirty, and five a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to just say hi. Yeah. I didn't actually was the one that went to comfort him because your mom is wonderful and she helps mm-hmm. him out. But I still kind of almost wake up by proxy yep. sometimes or whatever. So I'm yeah. not sleeping all that well. And I got to write an email to the CIO of some very large organization with several typos in it, (laughs) (laughs) you know, like at starting at eight o'clock because I cover the East coast. So it's, it is at that time in the morning. No, I am. I do not enjoy it. Cause I'm like, yo, I need coffee. No, please go back on that side of the fence. I got to get logged (sighs) on. I got a a call or a meeting or whatever. And I, I say fence. It's like not it's not a, that's that's real. It's an actual fence, not a metaphorical like <laughs> oh, with a really? gate. Oh really? Oh yeah, like exactly. Okay. Like just stay in the kitchen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Over here. Please do not try and like pole vault off of the wooden chair <laughs> onto the tile floor. Thank you very These much. These are your jeans, by the way. So that's so true. I'm yeah, really in trouble. Yeah, you cannot. <laughs> yes. You cannot be too upset. <laughs> oh my god, that's yeah. scary accurate. Um, but like after the fact, like after the fact, even all the, the ups and downs, like it's, you know, like, again, like, I mean, think of it, think of it this way, man, like the two, the two examples around parenthood, like you can read about skydiving and you can watch videos on skydiving. Yeah. Talk to people about sky. Until you go skydiving, you don't really have a clue. Nice. Like, and I, and I think that it's more like throw the parachute out of the plane first and then jump after it and yeah. like free fall, try to catch it to put it on. So you hopefully land safely. You know what I mean? Like that's, that sounds motivating <laughs> that, that, I mean, like it, 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 you want to talk about the awareness of divine blessings and assistance. Like, yeah, that's Trust when it. those do. Yeah. That's when those communication models become really applicable and the benefit of knowing your spouse are really applicable because stress adds up. People get there. You start to hear it in a tone of voice. And then you're like, yep. And again, then it's cost benefit analysis. Sorry, work not going to happen. I'm going right. to put you down because I got to go do this step in to help out or whatever, or even level setting on like expectations. Of like, yeah, yeah. Hey, what does bed team routine really look like? Is it floss? brush hair, Beth, potty, and jammies. If we're running out of time, what is, which of these five have to go? Yeah. You no. Know? And so again, all on communication models and like, um, so I say all of that, like, cause again, like the 360 degree view of it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It, dude, and I've got a picture. We'll have to have a follow up call, man. Cause I'll show you. I mean, I'm sure you've seen some posts and whatever, like it's yeah, doing the cutest stuff. Man. I know, like, man. No, I saw your last post recently where you're like, how life is going. And, and it was just you, you lying on the couch and your kids and the dog are just. In my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we were at the park and like I was on my phone because we were having a picnic and like Anna literally is climbing on me. And I saw a couple laughing because here I am just like normal, like handing up oh, here's a cracker. And like, dad, dad, like yeah. standing on me and Miles is like, what? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's so funny but yeah. you know to 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 bring this whole thing to a uh conclusion as much is as this I where we ask for like the the ponzi scheme you're gonna ask like for four dollars a day i can sponsor like <laughs> this whole like thing that? has been an ad <laughs> 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 and, uh, but no but on a serious note, i was gonna say that to, to kind of tie your current uh, life 
current Ryan and what you're yeah. dealing with as a, as a parent and a husband. Yeah. Um, and, and having that support, right, from your wife in, in parenting. Yeah. My other half, you might say. Your second half is what you called it. <laughs> your better half, I would say. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you, uh, you can think about, I was thinking about when you were explaining the process of parenting and, and, and the, uh, although your kids are young and they're in their adolescent mm. years right now, um, I was thinking about you as a kid and, and having to uh, grow up with a single mom, mm. right? And then um, does... who was a substitute teacher. <laughs> substitute. I was like, what? Yeah, she was a substitute teacher. Oh, you were a substitute teacher. Right, right. Okay, I see. Yeah. So yeah, like so... In income on top of that, it was, I see. you know, finances. Right, right, right. right. Challenges. That challenges. Well, what I'm saying is, uh, I'm sure you've thought about this, but has, has that come to your mind to kind of have, what, looking back at, young ryan and seeing mm. oh wow i you know she went through she she didn't have it easy to have to raise me oh, yeah. herself, you know like mm. that's kind of where i was my my head was going um when you were mentioning the process of parenting as a unit yeah, yeah. so then, like take one of those Dude. one of those out of the picture yeah and that was you growing up and and it yeah for me i think of that and i'm like yeah, no parent is perfect, single or or as a right. unit. But right. but those challenges, I feel like you have a deeper understanding of what she was going through, probably. Oh man, yeah. No, having having become a parent yeah. and reflecting back on my my mom's own uh, accomplishments really for raising both of us. Because then on top of on top of being the single parent was diagnosed with breast cancer, yeah, stage three yeah. breast cancer. I was like yeah. 13, something like that. Yeah. And then like, and then, I mean, at the time it was like radiation, chemotherapy and all that stuff. Like medicine was not as advanced as I'm making myself sound real old, but it was like, I remember my mom like crying on the bathroom floor, like trying to shelter my sister from coming over to see it while she was losing her hair. And like for one yeah. thing or another, or just sleeping and having neighbors bring us food to a 13 year old and an 11 year old because mom was like zero energy, couldn't get out of Not, bed. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Um, so the, like all of, with all of that in context, it sounds, again, it sounds a little, man, it sounds a, a little weird and honestly, I would probably have to talk to like a psychologist to give a more accurate assessment mm -hmm. of it because there's two, my perception, the two fold aspect of it is I feel like, I feel like Allegra and I live in a different world than what I grew up in. Like, and I, and I say that because of the fact of like, and this is so dumb. It's because I studied economics, but the fact that like, I have a, an excellent job that, that compensates well. So we're given more opportunity and luxury to make decisions and do the patch. Well, we'll just, you know, why don't we just go out to eat tonight? Uh -huh. Because you know, I'm exhausted from the kids and I haven't prepared anything. And because I've been crazy busy, I haven't gone grocery shopping. Yeah. That's cool. No sweat. And we'll have weeks where we go out for a, three nights a week or something like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that concept alone as an indicator of how different the world of what it was growing up for a low, like lower income household where we went out to eat once every four months you know what i mean and like mm -hmm. and it was a big deal yeah, like yep. you know going out to eat so and, and my mom just didn't have the tools or the resources to just ah well you know what just do this right and like she even actually introduced me the theory of 
different income classes and how they perceive food where it's like yeah. the upper echelon it's always like does the food look nice is it presentable uh-huh. is this appealing whatever and the middle class will ask like yo does this taste good sometimes it doesn't taste good sometimes it's like real crap but does it taste good and then the lower the bottom bottoms you're like do we have enough food like that's the only underlying question. Like yeah. it doesn't matter if it looks good, it should never yeah, yeah. Like, whatever. Does it taste good? Who cares? Is there enough to make sure everyone feels full? Like that, those are like the three things as far as like food goes. Yeah, yeah. So it's, that's why I say, man, it would probably need someone much more skilled and knowledgeable as far as like the human mind and perception of it um, to answer it accurately. But I mean, that was a personal response from you, which is what I was asking for. And, and uh-huh. I think, and I think that, um, and I think that is a great, uh, example of where your life was and, and where you were, your humble beginnings, as we discussed to, to, to what you've made of yourself, right. In 60, 70 years. <laughs> End of discussion. Click. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. No, he's 20, 85. and you're uh you're still considered on this half of life so exactly young professional right young professional there you go yeah we didn't censor anything else but now your age is the one that's too much (laughs) i love how you pivoted this whole conversation to ryan page and pezron to just be at the wedding as a fill-in in the background to no, 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 Ryan's old and archaic and antiquated. Let's make that a takeaway and doesn't know what the dates are from when he started dating his wife. Let's highlight that. I was going to edit the first one, but now you've put it back in. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you, I mean, I, as a friend, as a, as a good friend, you, I consider you a good friend. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm beyond proud based on the story you've shared and Dude. And I don't even, I can honestly say right now that about 70 to 80% of the stuff you shared today was news to me. I didn't know it. Right. Um, and I'm bummed about that myself on as at myself, because when we were younger, you know, you, you're joking around, you, yeah. you, we're not cognitively at a level yet to really even have enough life experience to appreciate yeah. these discussions. And yeah. So in a way, I mean, I am bummed at myself, but at the same time, yeah, I've been wondering what those drawings are back there. But oh, this is for work. It's a hyperconverged infrastructure and a three, two, one thing. That's what I do now for for work. I understood the three, two, one part. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically, it's tech, it's cloud computing, it's cool. But it wasn't a. I thought you I was, said you're financially well, man. What you can't afford an eraser. See, they, we co- um, overcome challenges, man. No eraser. I was like, whatever. Let me just. I didn't want to pull out the Versace cloth over oh, there and wipe it down. I, see, right yeah, I, see. Exactly. I didn't know. They, I didn't know they sell Versace cloth. But no, okay. man. It's a Burberry shirt that I. Uh, I'm so sick. I gotta <laughs> light them on fire to get my stove going. No, well, the don't idea, light anything on fire, please. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, people. But to the, that point, to that very real point of what you yeah. talked about, like you said, 80% of that background information you didn't know, right? Yeah. Because the idea of presented self, right? Right. Yes. Very proud of where and fortunate and humble and lucky to be at where I'm at uh, from, a, from a life perspective, you know, like homeowner, lovely family, annoying dog, um, and, and happy and like, and feeling, and like, and, and, and getting like, I mean, awarded and recognized for, you know, there's a lot of like faith and blessings that come into that which lucky auspicious timing just kind of like working out. Right. But to that point, what people think success looks like is that right. Yeah, Something yeah. like that in reality is like, right. Right. So you don't actually like want to go necessarily advertising that portion of it, but like, you know, which is why they, in our friendship, like, you know, yo man, I had some serious, you know, potential hardships because you don't want to stifle the idea of growth and development. Right. But when you find someone who's like very, they're candid enough to be like, Oh yeah, there's all this. That's the problem with like social media is like that, that image that project itself. Everything's so perfect for me. Is that like, yo man, there's like, even when you're dating, when you meet someone, it's like, you see this much of it. 
the person's actually this much. And we make the false assumption that, well, I know this much, all of it must be just like that. Right. And it's like, right. no, that's not how it works. And as you no. get to know them and expand it, you got to be able to like recognize a holistic person. Of course, I've got plenty of that. Um, and then, and, and do you know, um, that is, one of the main purposes of this show, this is why I wanted to do this podcast is because the first priority was togetherness and humility. Those were the first two um, like starting factors, do you, like what, what kind of set things in motion. Yeah. This, the second, but equally as important was learning, hmm. right? Learning from my guests. And the beauty about that discovery that I made as being the prime reason for this podcast was that I can learn from anybody, right? Yeah. When I combined, when I, it's, I'm not by any stretch saying that I've know these things to a T I'm working on humility every day and I'm working on trying to learn every day. Cool. And, and it's not easy. But that was the point. That was the whole purpose is, is let me practice something that is actually going to enrich my mind as much love as it. it's, it's enriching, you know, other Dude, people that, may, that, that could be benefiting. Anyway, yeah. because there's a, million, there's a million people out there that can relate to your story. That's what I'm Dude, saying. Yeah, you know? no, I absolutely love it. Pez. Like I said, I was, it was funny how I was impressed and surprised about how quickly you started the recording. Because I was like, we just have some vague background, you know, you're like, nope, yeah. we're getting right into it. Let's go live. <laughs> click. And I was like, okay, you know, well, part of so, that was I wanted to respect your time. But, uh, you know, I'm glad that you were flexible enough to be able to spend grit, a couple hours dude, with me. No sweat. Like, absolutely. <laughs> like, I mean, you want something? We'll do it. All right. I promise you that. I, and again, like, it, you know, get yeah. it. And the Allegra again, same way. So, um, dude, that's, that's awesome. I first, first and foremost, I, I genuinely commend you and I and appreciate the fact that you like taking a, a humble posture of learning to like for like benefit self-improvement and the, the ingenious aspect, phil, philanthropic, yeah, philanthropic uh -huh. kind of aspect of like, yo, I'm on my own journey. I'm learning some stuff. I'm picking it up. Those of you want to come along with me here, we're going, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think I mean, so it, it, I, I, I thought of it locally, right? The business model. I, act uh act locally is it and then yeah yeah think globally act locally yep. I forgot. Yeah. yeah yeah so that's, that's kind of the that's kind of where my head was at but again togetherness and then the the bonus of it all is i get to chat with some good old friends you know what i mean yeah and, and, and that was that's the real beauty in all of it and um this will the idea with this thing is eventually to open up to people i don't know either, as well yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to bring on you know guests that are I, I would be great people, them. great people. Basically you're practicing. Like, let me bring in some friends so I can like get these losers to talk to me. <laughs> so I, then I can, when I'm really good at doing interviews, bring in the guests. We're the, Absolutely. we're the Guinea pigs. <laughs> That's it. Right. That's it. These are going to be in the, if there is such a thing as a hall of fame of podcast, you and the other friends, <laughs> these are going to be the OGs, man. You guys Dude, are what love it. You guys were, were what has helped this thing grow to 11 episodes and beyond up to 13, you know? Dude, love it. I'm glad I'm not lucky 13. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, man, I'm, I'm really happy with where your life has come. And, and, um, and yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and I'm sure there's more to that that we haven't learned. And, I'll, and that's, that's a, uh, my way. 201. Of <laughs> 201, yeah. And that's my way of wanting you back on here. Maybe we can do a uh, couples episode. That would be, Dude, that would yeah. be, good, you know, I think, yeah. I think there's a lot our wives can uh, call on our bluffs. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> there was no vague, vague, just like call you out on your BS and correct <laughs> yeah. you on those dates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, man, Ryan, I really appreciate you coming on it almost short, like with a zero notice. And your flexibility was awesome. And your stories were even better. And um, any anything you'd like to plug? 
I always ask my guests just in case you have something like just like hot ones where you like get a minute or whatever to like speak. Have you seen that? Have you seen it? Yeah, I have. But but I, I'm I glad just... I have to eat super spicy food to like. <laughs> um, oh man, I think honestly, like you can edit that last bit out, but like I think that <laughs> realistically, I think that it's important to recognize that there are no absolutes in binary aspects of people. Quit making, generalizing all cops are this, mm -hmm. or if you support that political system, that you must be that. Prejudice is irrefutably the most rampant and destructive aspect of our culture. Mm -hmm. And I think Dave Chappelle really said it best. And I don't know the quote, maybe you throw it up at the end, but yeah. it said that our society has accepted two huge lies where that if you, if someone does A, B, and C, then you just assume that they must be X, Y, and Z, and therefore your enemy. Yeah. And if they don't, if they do, then they're absolutely your hundred these dichotomies that we've created yep. that people are holistic ups and downs mm -hmm. filled with stuff and everything yeah. is um um on a spectrum that yeah. you just have to accommodate for people are much more there's much more to people than just type a and type b yeah uh, or right. or left or right so yeah um i couldn't have a asked for a better plug man that's a great plug Right most people most people are like uh yeah my instagram is this and that but uh <laughs> buy nike <laughs> yeah. or don't don't buy nike <laughs> but uh man invest in online security cloud computing yeah. that's right <laughs> no but you you said it best man it's true all of the i mean there's nothing for me to even improve that by you you said it perfectly and learn about people you know that that's yep. that's why i'm doing this and and yep. hopefully with each episode you know uh we can i can help inspire that purity in thought and purity in mind yeah i mean if you want to stop the recording i can show you this video <laughs> what i mean well on that note uh that wraps up episode 11 <laughs> which will definitely be a two-parter <laughs> and uh <laughs> Because I honestly want people to be able to grasp everything that yeah discussed and and keeping it in two hour format two and a half hours, um, I'd rather it be in two, uh, two one and fifteen. So perfect. But but hey, thanks again, man. I appreciate the time, and uh, and I want to visit Austin soon. <laughs> Love you, brother. Love thanks you, again, man. man. See ya. As always, subscribe, like, and follow Fumble Podcast on YouTube and your podcast platform of choice. Thank you again for listening, and I'll catch you on the next one. Showcase your very